It was a hot summer day when a group of five friends decided to explore the abandoned hospital on the outskirts of town. The hospital had been shut down for years, and its halls were rumored to be haunted by the ghosts of patients who died there. The friends were thrill-seekers, eager to experience something out of the ordinary. They parked their car outside the hospital and made their way inside. The hospital was dark and eerie, with peeling paint and broken windows. The air was thick with dust, and the silence was punctuated only by the sound of their footsteps. As they made their way through the halls, they started to feel like they were being watched. Every shadow seemed to move, every whisper seemed to be a ghostly voice. They explored the hospital for hours, checking out the operating rooms, the laboratories, and the patient rooms. But it was in the basement that they found something truly terrifying, a room filled with old medical equipment and cages. The cages were empty, but the friends couldn't shake the feeling that something had been kept there, something that wasn't quite human. As they turned to leave, they heard a sound behind them, a low growl, followed by a shuffling of feet. They turned around and saw a figure in the darkness, its eyes glowing red. It was like nothing they had ever seen before, half human, half animal, with razor sharp claws and a mouth full of teeth. The creature let out a deafening roar, and the friends ran for their lives. They didn't stop running until they were outside, panting and sweating. They looked back at the hospital, but the creature was nowhere to be seen. They got into their car and drove away, but they knew they would never forget what they had seen. They didn't know what the creature was, but they knew it wasn't human. And they knew that they had been lucky to escape with their lives. The friends never spoke about the experience again, but they could never shake the feeling that something was following them, something that had been unleashed by their exploration of the abandoned hospital. They learned the hard way that some places should remain abandoned, and some things should remain a mystery. It was a sunny day when Sarah's family moved into their new home. The old Victorian house was spacious and beautiful, and Sarah was excited to explore every nook and cranny. She spent hours wandering through the rooms, admiring the antique furniture and the vintage decor. But it was in the attic that she found something truly special, a dusty old doll, sitting on a shelf in a dark corner. The doll was made of porcelain, with delicate features and long curly hair. It was dressed in a vintage white dress, adorned with lace and frills. Sarah felt a strange attraction to the doll and decided to take it down to her bedroom. Her parents warned her that the doll might be haunted and that she should leave it in the attic, but Sarah wouldn't listen. She felt like the doll was calling to her, and she couldn't resist its charm. That night, strange things started happening in Sarah's bedroom. The lamp flickered on and off, the curtains rustled even though the window was closed, and the door creaked open and shut on its own. Sarah felt a cold breath on her neck and heard a whisper in her ear. She turned around, but there was no one there. She tried to convince herself that it was just her imagination, but deep down, she knew it was something else, something sinister. Over the next few days, the supernatural occurrences continued. Objects moved on their own, Footsteps echoed through the hallway, and the doll seemed to change positions every time Sarah looked away. She started to feel like she was losing her mind. Her parents were getting worried too, but Sarah refused to part with the doll. She felt like it was her only friend in the house, the only one who understood her. One night, Sarah woke up to find the doll sitting at the foot of her bed, staring at her with its glassy eyes. It started to move its limbs contorting in unnatural ways. Sarah tried to scream, but no sound came out. She felt a cold hand on her face, and the next thing she knew, she was in the attic, surrounded by dolls just like the one she had brought down to her bedroom. Sarah's parents never found her. They searched the house from top to bottom but couldn't locate her. They eventually moved out of the house, but the new owners reported strange occurrences, whispers in the night, footsteps in the hallway, and a porcelain doll that seemed to move on its own. Some say that Sarah's spirit still haunts the house, trapped forever by the haunted doll that she refused to let go of. For generations, the Smith family had lived in their beautiful Victorian home on the edge of town. It was a grand old house, full of memories and heirlooms 
but it was also cursed. Legend had it that a witch had cursed the house back in the 1800s, and that every member of the Smith family who lived there would suffer a terrible fate. The curse seemed to be true. The family had seen its fair share of tragedy over the years, from accidental deaths to mysterious illnesses. But the worst was yet to come. It started with Mary, the youngest daughter of the family. She had just moved back into the house with her husband and newborn baby. One night, she heard a strange noise coming from the nursery. When she went to investigate, she saw a ghostly figure hovering over the crib. The figure vanished when Mary turned on the light, but she knew something wasn't right. She started to feel like she was being watched all the time, and her baby wouldn't stop crying. Mary's husband thought she was being paranoid, but he changed his mind when he started experiencing strange things too. He saw shadowy figures in the hallways and heard whispers in the night. One day, he found scratch marks on the inside of the closet door, as if someone had been trapped inside. The family tried to leave the house, but they found that they couldn't. Every time they tried to pack their bags and drive away, something would happen to make them stay. The car wouldn't start, or the road would be blocked, or they would simply forget why they wanted to leave in the first place. As the days went by, the family members started to change. They became irritable, paranoid, and violent. They started to turn on each other, blaming each other for the strange occurrences in the house. The baby stopped crying and started laughing, a hollow, chilling sound that made Mary's blood run cold. One night, Mary woke up to find herself alone in the house. Her husband and baby were gone, and she couldn't remember where they had gone. She searched the house from top to bottom, but there was no sign of them. She tried to leave the house, but the doors and windows were locked. She was trapped, alone, and surrounded by the ghosts of her ancestors. The Smith family house remains standing to this day, a dark and foreboding presence on the edge of town. It's said that every now and then, a brave soul will venture inside, only to be consumed by the curse that still lingers there. The Smith family may be long gone, but their legacy lives on in the curse of their family home.